my wife, Marcella Brown. She's been mighty good to me. She likes to work behind the scene, but she's been mighty good to me. Amen. Lord, we come before you now. First of all, I just tell you, thank you, Lord. Lord, you've been mighty good to us. Lord, we thank you for your presence on this morning. Now, Lord, I pray that you just be with us through this sermon. Lord, give me clarity of thought in mind, body, and spirit. We pray that your Holy Ghost have the right of way. We're going to give your name the praise, honor, and the glory, which I already do to you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. For all of you that have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 8, verses 3 through 11. John chapter 8, verses 3 to 11. If you have a say amen. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set, when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken into adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that you should, she should be stoned. What says thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And when they heard it, being con convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the eldest and even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone. And the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw no one but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You may be seated. And from these scriptures, my topic will be, I know I'm not good enough, but he still loves me. My subtopic would be God has a purpose. They caught a woman. This morning I'm gonna teach. I'm not gonna preach this morning. I'm, I'm gonna teach this morning. All right. Um, this woman was caught in the very act of being in adultery. Uh, she was sleeping with someone that was not her husband. Uh-huh. 
and the man was sleeping with her. Uh huh. Uh huh. And the Pharisees did not bring the man unto Jesus. They brought the woman naked. Uh huh. They brought the woman naked unto Jesus. I'm going to take my time and tell the story. Uh huh. And they brought her unto him naked, but they did not bring the man. It goes to show you that they really weren't concerned about the sin. They were more concerned about trying to trick Jesus. Uh huh. Uh huh. They were more concerned about tricking Jesus. Had Jesus contradicted Moses' law, then Jesus uh -huh, would have been condemned as being a false prophet. In other words, she was supposed to be stoned by Moses' law. Uh -huh. Under Moses' law, any person that is condemned of adultery is supposed to be stoned, man and woman. Uh huh. Uh huh. And had Jesus condemned the woman, uh huh, he would have been accused to the Romans as being an unsurping authority. Lord have mercy. Is that a catch 22? In other words, he's acting if Jesus would have accused the woman and uh, stoned her to death. Uh huh. Then he would have fallen under the Roman rule is that he can't cast judgment. Only Romans can. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, Lord have mercy. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. So, in that time, that if a person were to still uh, be caught in adultery, uh huh. They were supposed to be put on a gallow, uh huh, that's 10 to 12 feet high. Lord have mercy. Uh huh. And pushed off forcefully. Then, if the man or woman did not die, then the father, or both the woman and the man, was to cast the first stone. And then proceeded follows that then the mother cast the next stone. Then the, the priest were to cast the next stone. Then the children were to cast the next stone. And then after that, if she or he is still alive, then the church were to cast the next stone because she disobeyed and she was caught in the act and he was caught in the act but it, to the Pharisees it was not the act of sin uh -huh. what it was about is trying to trick Jesus they tried to trick him they tried to make him go against because if it were not a trick they would have bought the man to Lord have mercy uh huh. There were six causes of convictions going on here. Their own evil designs against Jesus, not so much against her. They wanted to trick her. Uh huh. Uh huh. Second conviction was they failure to include the man who was guilty with the woman. Uh huh. Their third conviction what Jesus wrote on the ground. Uh-huh. Their fourth conviction, the challenge of throwing stones if they were sinless themselves, which they couldn't do. Uh-huh. The fifth conviction, the hypocrisy, which was known, which was known to Jesus that they, what they were trying to do. Uh-huh. Jesus knows our heart. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And their sixth conviction was their guilt of committing the same act. 
Lord have mercy. So, what's, what's going on here? There's a lot going on here. I'm glad you asked. What's going on here, I want to uh, focus for a minute on the last conviction. <laughs> the guilt of committing the same act, the act of adultery. Yes, sir. So, so, in other words, the woman did it. Uh-huh. The woman did it. And they want to bring her before Jesus naked. Uh-huh. And left the man there. Uh-huh. But then, then they sit there and uh, if you was the intent of following Moses' law, then you would have brought the man too. I know I'm not good enough, but he still loves me. Uh -huh. Because if he did not love me, he wouldn't have died for me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I promise not to be before you long. So, so they left out the man. Lord have mercy. And the man was there too. They left out their own convictions. Because Jesus said, Deep, he without sin cast the first stone. Notice this. Jesus didn't pray for her. Did anybody care? He did not pray for the woman. Uh-huh. He rolled on the ground. Uh-huh. He did not pray for her, cast any spirits out of her, or any of that. He didn't even say the salvation prayer unto her. He didn't save it at that moment. What he did was forgave her. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Scripture teaches us that in John chapter 8, this woman didn't have a name. But further on in the book, which was too much reading, so I cut it short. But further on, this woman had a name. Uh -huh. Women are the recipients uh -huh, of, I don't choose my words. Uh -huh. uh, women are the recipients when, to come, when it comes to uh, certain activities. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They are deposited into. Uh -huh. So having said that, yes, Jesus forgave her. Uh huh, and told her to go sin no more. But being in flesh, something happens. The woman is, oh, Lord have mercy, forgave for a moment. Uh huh. She's forgave and she's on the right track. Uh huh. And something happens in between being on the right track and falling back into the thing which you was forgiven for. Uh huh. Because we're in flesh. We're subject. We're subject to go back into the things that we used to do if we're not careful. And through all that, though I'm not good enough, He still loves me. And yes, and God still has a purpose. Uh huh. For us. Uh huh. Yes, yeah, so she goes back. Uh huh. Lord have mercy. She eventually goes back into her old ways. She was good for a season, but she went back to the old practice of things that she used to do. Uh huh. And in that time, when she went back, Lord have mercy, she was infected. Uh huh. With seven. <laughs> Spirits, uh huh. Uh, Lord, this is this this message made me made me cut a step. Uh huh. Yes. Uh huh. So she was infected because she went back to what she used to do. That thing that she knew that she was pretty good at, apparently. Uh huh. But thanks be to God. Uh huh. I know I'm not good enough. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. But he still loves me. Uh huh. So, Mary Magdalene, if you didn't figure it out, 
Mary Magdalene was the same woman uh -huh, that had another encounter with Jesus. But the second time around, in the second encounter, what does Jesus do? Uh huh. Jesus forgives her. He sanctifies her. Uh huh. And she became mighty in the ministry of Jesus. How do we know this? Because there's so many scriptures that says that when Jesus rose from the grave, who did he show himself to first? To Mary Magdalene. So that would say that she was important in his ministry. But God has a purpose. Uh huh. God has a purpose. Even though I'm not good enough, he still loves me. With all my imperfections, he still loves me. Even though I may be the biggest trick, I'm gonna use that word, uh huh. He still loves me. And he still has a purpose. I may be the biggest liar. But guess what? God still loves me. And he still has a purpose. I may be a lesbian. But guess what? He still loves me. And God has a purpose. I may, the, I may be the biggest backbiter. But he loves me. But God has a purpose. I may be the biggest whore. But he loves me, but God still has a purpose. I may be the biggest drunk, but he loves me, and he still has a purpose. I may be the biggest wino, but he loves me, and he still has a purpose for me. I may, I may be the biggest gambler, but he loves me. And he still has a purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God still has a purpose. God still has a purpose. I may be good in the sheets, but he still loves me. And he still has a purpose for me. Man, man, put it into perspective. That this sin, this sin is worse than that sin, and that sin, and that sin, and man did that. My Bible tells me, huh, sin, thank you. Sin is sin. There is no big sins, there ain't no little sins. If I smoke marijuana, he still loves me. And he still has a purpose for me. I want to speak to those that have some past history. You know, people that, you know, they like to throw things up in your face that you used to do. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but let me tell you this. An encounter with Jesus will turn you around. Another woman last night, but an encounter with Jesus will turn me around. Hallelujah! I may have slept. This is figuratively speaking because I don't play them kind of games. I may have slept with another man, but guess what? An encounter will turn you around. Lord have mercy. I may have had children out of wedlock, but guess what? He still loves me, and he's going to turn me around. <laughs> if we are saints,
Stop judging people. Lord have mercy. Stop judging. Jesus, in this initial encounter with Mary Magdalene, he forgave her. He forgave her. He didn't pray for her. He just forgave her. He said, where were your accusers? Uh -huh. And they left in the right chronological order under Moses' law. Can I say that? Because they did. <laughs> Lord have mercy. They left. They tried to trick Jesus. But the trick was on them. Because once Jesus gets into your heart, I'm just let me back up. First, he got to start with the mind. If he can get in your mind, the rest of the body will follow. Uh -huh. So no matter what sin that we come across, let's stop being so judgmental. And let's encourage them. And let's say, you know what? God still loves you. Uh -huh. And God still has a purpose for you. Should I be call the role? I'm gonna call one road, one person on the road, because it's mm hmm, mm hmm, uh huh. Uh, Peter, he was militant, extremely militant. He was one of Jesus' greatest followers. Jesus told him that he would deny him three times before the cock crows. But yet when Jesus died and it came to pass as Jesus had said it would, when it came to pass, Jesus still loved Peter. How do we know this? I'm glad you asked. Because Jesus, when he rose from the grave, uh -huh, and he says, now go get Peter. He says, go get Peter. So in other words, he want to restore him. Jesus knew his heart. Jesus knew his mind. But he had to restore him because he failed. In other words, he fell into temptation. He fell into sin. But guess what? Jesus still loved him. Yes. And Jesus still had a purpose. And his purpose led to him, Lord have mercy, to the day of Pentecost. So, I'm saying this to say, let's stop judging. Let's encourage. If you ain't trying to build, don't tear them down. Let's, let's do the right thing. Jesus did the right thing. Now, it may take some time. We may invite people here to church. And um, um, uh, Pastor Wick used to say that if they stay close enough to the fire, uh -huh, they're going to get burned. But until such a time, let's keep praying for them. We're going to keep encouraging them. We're going to keep lifting them up in prayer. Uh huh. They will keep coming if we don't tear them down. They will catch on fire. And guess what? And God still has a purpose for them too. It may not look good right now, but God still has a purpose for them. Thank you, Jesus, standing all over this building. I want to speak to those that, that have problems, that have issues, those that people keep throwing your past up in your face. You know, remembering the old you in 2023, uh -huh, the thief, the liar, the homemonger, the drunk, the weed smoker, the drug smoker, whatever it may be. I want to speak to those first. God still loves you. He still has a purpose for you. And he will not. He will not stop loving you. My Bible tells me that if Jesus is walking with 100 sheep, uh-huh, if he's walking with 100 sheep and one of the sheep's were to fall away, he will leave.
beat the 99. Why? Because they are right. They're on track. They are fulfilling their purpose. So he leaves the 99 and go after the one. The one that lost their purpose. The one that lost their way. The one that was beat down all of their life. Saying that they wasn't going to be nothing. You're just like your mama. You're just like your daddy. You ain't no good. But he still loves us. Whew. But he still loves us. He still, thank you, he still has a purpose. Yes, I may have had children out of wedlock. It's all right because he still loves me. And the child or children and the mother still has a purpose. So I made the call. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. I made the call for all of those that have been looked over, talked about, slandered, those that have had children out of wedlock, those that have told they weren't going to be no good, those that have been to prison or gone to jail, all those that have been accused or falsely accused. I'm speaking to you right now. Let's, let's come together. Let's talk about this thing. Let's, let's restore such a one. Because my Bible tells me that if my brother is overtaken with a fault, uh -huh, let those that are spiritual restore such a one. Otherwise, we're going to pray for him. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us restore such a one. So for those that have been going through some things that's been talked about, lied on, run amok, lost, lost your faith, lost your direction, those who I want to speak to first, Lord have mercy. Those that have been looked over, those that have been that have been hurt by their mother, by their father, by their family members, those that have been turned that, that people turned their back on. These are the ones I want to talk to first. Thank you, Jesus. And for those that are not saved, I want to let you know that God still loves you. And he still has a purpose for you. God still loves you. And he still has a purpose for you. God still loves you. And guess what? And if God resides in me, I got to love you too. Uh-huh. I have to love you. I have to love you, not judge you. I have to love you and not judge you. I have to love you and not judge you. Why? Because God loves you and so do I. And God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose. Now, I know it's hard. I know it's hard to see the purpose when you're in the fire. But you hang on in there. Hang on in there. Thank you, Jesus. Hang on in there. Because God loves you. And you still have a purpose for God's kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Those that are not saved. Those that have lost their focus. Those that have lost their way. Those that just want prayer. Meet me at the altar. And we would like to pray with you. We want to intercede with you. We want to encourage you. That you're going to be alright. No matter what man and woman says about you. You are going to be alright. You're going to be all right because God loves you and you still have a purpose. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter what you said. 
no matter what activities you were involved in, God still loves you and he still has a purpose for you. All we have to do is commit to Jesus. We have to commit to him. Why commit to him? Because my Bible tells me that he knew me. He knew you before you were even conceived in your mother's womb. Now, so let's get it together. Let's not, as Evangelist Graham said this morning in Sunday school, let's not wait till the last or the ninth hour. We can enjoy the benefits today. Not on our deathbeds. Let's enjoy the benefits of God today. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. I'm knocking. I'm knocking. He's standing at the door and knocking. Thank you, Jesus. He's standing at the door and knocking. And if you let him in, he is going to make whatever that situation is go away. He's going to restore you. He's going to renew you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to empower you. And when you are able to stand by yourself flat-footed, go back and get those just like you. Let's go back and get them. Let's, let's go back and get them. The altar is now open. And there is someone in here that's hurting. Somebody in here is hurting. If God would tell me what it is, I would tell you. But someone in here is hurting. And all I want to do is pray with you. All I want to do is pray with you. And you don't have to confess your sins. All you have to do is just pray with us. And it is going to be all right. Because it's going to be all right. I, I tell you what, let's, let's do it this way. Because the Spirit of God is moving and someone in here is really... In a, in a bad situation. Let's everyone come by, come up to the altar. I'm not saying that you're at fault. I'm just saying someone in the building right now is hurting. Preachers, missionaries, Let's, let's pray with everyone. Thank you, Jesus. 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 No matter what you're going through, God is going to see you through. Hallelujah. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Spirit of the living God, Lord, we come before you right now just to tell you thank you. Lord, you know what we've been through. Lord, you know what people said about us. Lord, help us. In the name of Jesus, where we're weak, build us up. Where we're strong, make us stronger. In the name of Jesus, have your way. 
have your way, Lord. Touch us again. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help us to fulfill our purpose. Help us to remember that you still love us. No matter what's going on. No matter what we're going through. Hallelujah. You still love us. You still love me. You still love me. Lord, those that are broken, put them back together again. In the name of Jesus, do it for your glory. Hallelujah. And where I found thee, Lord God, forgive us. Save us again. Refill us again. Do it for your glory. Do it for your glory. Restore us now. In the name of Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. In the name of Jesus. Forgive us. And we shall be forgiven. Lord, let our past stay in the past. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let our past stay in the past. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let our past stay there. In the past. In the name of Jesus. Help us to be what you call us to be. Help us to fulfill our purpose. In the name of Jesus. And we'll be so careful to give your name the praise, to give your name the glory, to give your name the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.